good morning and I am in the town of Moyne. I say town, it's basically four houses. That's it, simple as. It's a crossroads, uh, I've just come from down this road, there, and I'm heading straight across, across the main road and down the road. Uh, pretty boring today, today, just two roads, one out of into Moyne and one from Moyne to Balladreen. Activity resumed. Not really a whole pile going on. It's uh, it's drizzly. First r kind of rainy day I've had really. Uh, it's just pretty drizzly and yeah. I, it, there's no route here. It's it's purely on roads, which is <coughs> I suppose we're scamming. Get the finger out. Make this happen because uh, the the variety of the route for the first three weeks was phenomenal. And the last couple of days has just been vanilla on the edge of a road with traffic and it's just not as pleasant an experience as you can probably see it's uh it's slightly wet today uh, it's the first day it's really been wet all day but it hasn't been too bad i can't really complain given it's january in ireland the weather i've got has been absolutely spectacular i'm on a road for all the day today and there's been a fair amount of traffic on it. I'm only a couple of kilometers outside of Balhadrain. I think it's important to focus at this point on the difference it makes having a marked way and just being at the mercy of the roads because uh, across the mountains and bogs and fields and farms and forests, the work that's gone on behind the scenes to make this trek possible is phenomenal. And that comes from I suppose ultimately about 15 years ago when Jim O'Sullivan in Castletown Bear decided he wanted to bring this trail to life and he has together with the communities along the route about 60 different communities in all have got together to develop this trail and this isn't just a national project although it is very much a national project its roots are in each of the communities so whether it's the village of Laura in North Tipperary or Kilfinnan in Limerick or Ockram in Galway or even Balhadrain in Roscommon it's been those communities the whole way up the country who've worked with local councils local grant agencies to make these waymark trails a reality and to make it possible for someone like me a complete novice to find their way through the country it's absolutely phenomenal and I think there are dozens, if not hundreds of people who have played a part in mapping, planning, compiling maps, compiling routes, sticking signs in the ground, nailing signs to trees and making it possible to walk it. My hats go off to each and every one of them. There are some places, however, that at the moment don't quite come up to standard. And I know the people involved in the route are very much aware of that and are working to make that a reality in the next six to 12 months. And I think it's gonna be in 2018 where the real potential of this route will be seen. I think it's gonna be a phenomenal tourist trail through Ireland. I think towns that haven't seen tourists in years or even set any forms of life or commerce are gonna have phenomenal futures because of this way. I think we talk about the Camino and the Appalachian Trail and the Pacific Crest Trail in the in the US, the Pennine Way in the UK, and I think the Better Brefney Way is gonna become one of those internationally renowned walking trails. The history, the tradition, uh, everything that goes with it. Never mind the actual beautiful scenery, the varied terrain and the beautiful people and the hospitable and generosity of the people along the way. It's gonna be an absolutely phenomenal game changer, I think, for some of these towns in Middle Ireland. It's only gonna get there in steps, but it needs everybody on board, and most of, most of the, the route ha is now complete. And in the next six to 12 months, I think, you'll be hearing a lot more about a Sullivan Bear and the Bear of Breffney Way. It is late afternoon, I have about an hour, hour and a half left of sunlight in the day, and down in the valley below me, you might be able to make out 
the snake-like outline of the N5, N5 to Westport. Um, it feels like I'm getting closer and closer to home all the time. But every time I think I'm getting close, the route sends me somewhere different. And I'm back up in the forestry, up in the hills of North Roscommon, South Sligo. So yeah, uh, I will finish the day today in Monaster Eden, Monaster Eden, Monaster Eden, which is just across the Sligo border. Uh, we spend a day or so in Sligo, heading up to Balnafad and on to Castle Baldwin, before going on to Ballyfarnan, which is just back in Roscommon again on the last night. And then the last day is predominantly in Roscommon again before finishing up just across the county line in the Trun village. It's all very exciting um, and it feels so good to be home. I did speak yesterday about how I have to take a little bit of time off the road this week because I'd taken on work commitments uh, that I had expected to be finished for but as we know on the trail nothing ever quite happens to plan so uh, yeah, tomorrow night in Athlone, Friday night in Kinloch which means two half days and means I will be finishing up in at Kilronan Castle in Ballyfarren and Kiju direction on Friday night, Friday afternoon actually, and then starting from there about 20 kilometres, 12 miles into Leitrim Village via a bit of a zigzag, but then what did you expect of this route? Um, it's very scenic, it's very pretty, and although the feet are very sore at this point, I'm quite enjoying the last couple of days on the walk. I'm in the mountains again. I found a bench! Yeah! It's such a rare event to find somewhere you could actually sit down, take a little breather, have a drink, have a little bite to eat, and want to eat an orange, and just take a breather, really. Uh, I am back in the wilderness of North Roscommon. South Sligo. I think Sligo is actually at the end of this road. It's not been smart, but the county line is just at the tip of this road, or maybe the next one, I'm not quite sure. I'll have to check the map. But I'm on the border again, and yeah, it's feeling kind of cool. Um, wet. It's not wet, wet, but it's just a little bit kind of drizzly and spluttery, and yeah, just not, not pleasant. Uh, pretty cloudy has been all day as you can see you can just about see over my shoulder the horizon sorry um, now over there you might not be able to make it out to the trees let's see if I can zoom in I probably can't nope um, there actually are windmills again I haven't seen windmills in a while but they're actually over my shoulder just in that gap but halfway between my head and the trees you probably can't see them though um, it's just too cloudy uh, I can barely make them out here with the naked eye. So yeah, uh, going to get on with a quick look, quick break and uh, finish off in Monastery Aden this afternoon, evening, about an hour, hour and a half left. Just out of the shower and so happy to be warm and dry and not out in the cold anymore. Uh, today was definitely the worst weather I've had so far and even then it wasn't really that bad. I'm in Boyle, uh, just outside Monastraden, where I finished up. Uh, well, I finished up just outside Monastraden on the Gertrude Road. Uh, so about 5k tomorrow morning to Monastraden, and then on to Ballin the Fad tomorrow night before taking a bit of a break to go and do a day's work. Uh, I got to speak in Athlone tomorrow night uh, before coming back and hitting the tarmac again on Thursday morning, uh, where I go from Ballin the Fad, give or take a couple of kilometres, uh, to the far side of Castle Baldwin. And then Castle Baldwin to Ballyfarn in the next day. Uh, three reasonable days, about 15 kilometres each, so 10 miles ish, give or take one or two. And uh, yeah, very excited about the next couple of days, and particularly about Saturday morning. Like I said in yesterday's video, we're meeting at Kilronan Castle at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. Would love to see any and everyone who's available who wants to come out and join me for either the full 20k of the day or even just parts of it. Uh, I'll post pictures of the, the route map up on the, my Facebook page and probably this evening and let you know where we're going to be in terms of times. 
don't really know. It's going to kind of be a hit and miss. We'll get there when we get there. Depends on the size of the group. Depends how many people are with us. Depends on who the weakest person is. Um, I will ask you to bring equipment. So bring a good pair of shoes, hiking boots or a pair of waterproof boots, preferably a stick if you'd like one. Uh, but make sure you're wearing uh, gear for the weather that we're expecting. So if it's promised wet, bring wet gear. You will get soaked otherwise and it'll be really uncomfortable and really you won't enjoy it. So just be, be kitted out right and no matter what the weather throws at you, you'll be absolutely fine. So uh, I'm going to leave you on that. Thank you so much for all the support, the continued support. It means so much every time I'm struggling and I'm looking up a hill and I've got wet weather in my face. Uh, it makes it so much easier to keep going. Thank you so much.